Let's see, Notre Dame and Wake Forest was canceled. There are a lot of cancel cancellations for COVID this week, y'all. Um, do you guys think that we will complete the season or will COVID cause it to be cut short on a college football level? Well, remember, I went on record early on saying I felt like we would start, but we would not finish. Um, I think it was huge that Notre Dame canceled. And I, you know, again, my son going to Notre Dame, I have definitely some inside track on that. And I was, so I knew before they announced it. And so it was like, dang, that's big. But it's also kind of scary because I bet you now parents are looking like, oh, dang. So, so the, the boy, because they're not releasing who has it. They're not really even releasing numbers unless they're good numbers. <laughs> so notice you didn't hear how many people had COVID, which is the reason they canceled. Um, but I think it's, it's, we're just taking a huge risk. SEC kicks off today, right? Or maybe last night or whatever. Um, I think it's a lot of people that may finish, but some of these, um, some of these schools are going to, I think they're going to bail because the, the liability, you cannot continue to put these young men at risk and it be, you know, known that you're putting them at risk. So I thought it was huge that Notre Dame, you know, canceled that game or postponed that game or whatever. But I also think it just speaks to the fact that COVID isn't going away. And the more you interact, the more you put these guys together, the more you bring in families, the more you, you know, you just expose them to different things. They're just even at more of a risk. So. Here's my question about these numbers that you talk about. I mean, they're all flawed anyway, aren't they? I mean, it seems like the different numbers and different reports come out every week. Listen, let the kids play football if that's what they're going to do. And if they, they want to take the risk of going out there and playing, then that's on them. Uh, you know what? If, if they truly believe that they need that football season, some of these kids are not getting younger. Some of these kids, they need this film. Some of these kids, this is their only opportunity to really go out there and shine and to prove themselves. And maybe they were in line for a starting job, have never got there, and they're going to get to go play six games. That six games is huge when it comes to the NFL because at the end of the day, that's all they can evaluate you on. If you do but really- at what cool cost? Things, but at what cost, cost, though? At what no, cost? My the thing, thing is, it's not, the, the NCAA, though, Damon, isn't putting anything in place. They're not giving certain schools the money that they need to even perform the test on a consistent basis. So when you talk about an HBCU that my son is at, and now he's practicing again because they're trying to kick off in February, I understand that. But I do think that a lot of these young men, they can't really make that decision. You're saying they need film, they need this. No, they need to live. They need to be healthy. They need to be able to go out one day and be a productive citizen in society. They need to be able to produce families. We don't know enough about COVID to just say, let them play if they want to play. Well, obviously they want to play. My son wants to play. But at the same time, he's 20 years old and still very wet behind the ears. He loves football. So he's definitely not going to turn it down. So we need some adults. We need some people who really have their best interest at heart to make some of these decisions. But here's not the thing. Do they have the best interest in your kid? No. Ooh. And at any level. I'm going to uh -huh. say, we're going to play football. And you know how I know we're going to play football? Because the SEC said that on December 19th, come hell or high water, they will have two teams playing in the championship. And once the SEC said that they were going to play, I knew we were going to play football. As long as, and I don't care what you say, but as long as strength everywhere says that we are playing football, we are playing football. And even though, like, it should be a red flag that Coach O goes on 60 Minutes and says the majority of his team has had COVID, but it ain't no red flag. We're going to play football because the SEC has said we're going to play football, and we're going to play until December 19th, and they're going to postpone, and they're going to cancel, and they're going to build in off days into schedules. I do – look, I'm at home with COVID – I'm, I will have, I got COVID in June. I left my house for the first time and didn't use my inhaler for the first time this week. That's three months. I had no pre-existing conditions and I was really healthy. The one, 
one thing I do know is that I don't have permanent damage to my lungs, but I still have breathing issues and they may continue for another three to six months. So I get it. I just don't think that adults care enough about kids to say, we really don't know what's going to happen to them. They need the money. They need the revenue. It's really, really great to say, oh, NFL film, that's a lie. It's really, really about the revenue that college football generates throughout communities. So should we play football? I don't think we should, but I'm biased. I know what it's like to have COVID and deal with it for a couple of months. Um, will we play football? Absolutely. Because hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. But Jared. Y'all... Y'all can't downplay the fact that um, football is a business for these kids. Like, if I told you right now, if I told all three of y'all right now, would you pick up, if I drop a hot dog on the floor and pick it up, right, ripen in the dirt and say, would you eat this hot dog for a dollar? All y'all going to look at me like I'm stupid. But if I say, would you eat this hot dog for a million dollars? You're going to be like, well, give me the damn hot dog, right? You know what I'm saying? What I'm trying to tell you is these kids have opportunities to start their life like nobody else. Even the ones that go to the NFL for three years and just make a couple, you know, a couple, a, a, a million or whatever, they have a great start of life. So with that comes sacrifice. Of course, COVID is serious, and we got to find out what what what's all going on with it. But that's not their job. We got you. You have to in the military. Again, I say this all the time. In the military, you have to keep living. You have to keep living. You can't just stop when something happens. What you have to do is you have to bag up and realize it's there and do it safely. Not just football, but just life period. If not, you're not living life. You're not living like why, 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 Randy, but when the CDC is telling you, when the medical doctors are telling you, like, what, what, so are we missing that? Like, you saying we have to see what it's about. They're telling you, they're telling you the risk. They're telling you not to do it, that there's not enough known or whatever. And I agree with what James had said. Yeah, I think they are going to play. Because again, Notre Dame, they, can't, they didn't cancel that game. They postponed it. And like she said, they're going to move stuff. They're going to do whatever it takes. But I just think that that's selfish. And I don't, and I agree. I think some of these young men, but, not enough of them get a start at a good life. The majority of them, probably 80% of them, are really kind of ass out because they didn't really major in something that they could really use or they really thought they were going to the league. And they're like, look at this COVID year. Like I said, I know so many guys who didn't even get a tryout because of COVID. Because the NFL ain't going to spend no money to bring you in to quarantine you and you run the risk of giving they team code. They, they're not spending that money. So those guys didn't even get a tryout. There are guys on practice squads that probably would have never been on practice squads if they would have tried guys out. So it's, it's the money. And I just think that that's horrible for our young men. But even the league, though, they're testing our guys every day. So I'm, I'm, I feel a little bit better about that than an HBCU that might test them once a month and, and then Notre Dame who's testing them every three days or every four days or whatever. Every day, every day. Yeah. Well, here, here again, I want to just add something in, though. I mean, see, why, is, why does it become a money factor when it becomes the league, but it doesn't become a money factor when we talk about the CDC? You don't think the CDC is getting money? You don't think the little pharmaceutical companies are making money? Listen, they're scaring the heck out of us right now. And yes, people have died from it. And yes, there are people like James Etta that are suffering really bad from the disease. And I'm not, I'm not knocking that. But at the end of the day, how can, who can you trust? Who can you trust? Well, 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 I'm a retired yeah. scientist. So I know that there are people out there that are really doing the research and doing their job, just like you right. said, as police officers. So you can't say that the whole CDC is out here lying. There is no pharmaceuticals right now for COVID. But so they systematically, ain't hold on, but systematically, the CDC has lied because we've had multiple institutions right here in Florida. Randy can attest to it right here in the state of great state of Florida, where multiple people, multiple facilities were sending in 100% rates of people testing positive. And that if okay. you went to the hospital, no matter what you went to the hospital for, and you went there for a stubbed finger, if you went in there and they tested you positive, they were hitting you positive. Another thing is the NFL in their first week of doing it, they swabbed players over 80 false readings. These are false tests. Are they being reported as positive? Yes, they are because they're being held out. Didn't go with the actual test that worked. We said we're going to figure out our own. We are living in a real life science experiment because people are stupid. And also because it's new. New means we, when I went to Vanderbilt to actually get my lungs x-rayed to make sure that I don't have permanent damage, the one thing he said is novel means new. 
It means we don't know anything. So we, when I hear this debate, I'm like, it's a hell of a lot. It's a lot of us that don't know science. Science means that they're trying things because they don't know what's going to work. They don't know. So things change, not necessarily because it's a serious, something's like sinister. Like I had to deal with the fact that for the next three to six months, they're going to be trying different steroids on me to see what works because they don't know what works. That ain't because they, they want to hurt me. That's because they're, it's new. No one knows. So you're going to see a lot of change because they don't know. It isn't the tests, they were created. Like w there was an actual viable test. We decided we didn't want tests from the who. We decided we wanted to create our own. Well, we're, when you live in a real life science experiment, the first car with, that was created, it didn't work. Like I wish people would like understand you ain't gotta like science but like understand what a science experiment looks like until you figure out the path it's all guessing it's all guessing and i'm gonna say this and then we'll move on the nfl medical exam is undefeated it's gonna be some kids it happens every year. It's going to be some kids. Should we have a combine that get up there and they're going to go to their, go through their meds and it's going to be like, nope, sorry. We are not going to be able to allow you to go forward because you have some type of damage. It's going to happen. We haven't even hit flu season. It's going to happen. So some people, right, they're going to play and they're going to lose their opportunity for the future because it's going to happen. It happens every year and it's going to happen. And what, I would, what I've learned is that people who are asymptomatic have the same type of damage to their lungs as people who are like, as people who have symptoms like me. So like you could have someone, a kid that's walking around looking all normal but you really won't know and so I just think that this is gonna like I said before definitely gonna play football I anticipate that we'll be playing December 19th I have antibodies so I can actually go to a game very excited about this but I think we're gonna play so we're gonna go to the next question this is one of my favorite this is our tweener question I learn something every time so the three four the 4-3 and the 4-2-5 are the major defenses that are run in college football. <laughs> the first question is, who do they affect position-wise? And the second question is, why don't more kids pick schools with defenses that fit them instead of focusing on just the name of the school? Yeah, yeah I, I think that's a big deal. Uh, I think – uh, the kids and parents need to look at these different defenses uh, of these different schools. Um, and uh, basically, that's going to tell you about your time, your opportunity to get time on the field. You're not only battling the person, you're battling the, the amount of positions of, that's out there. You know what I'm saying? So you got you the 4-3 and the 3-4. And it's, I mean, the difference is how many front linemen are out there versus how many linebackers are out there and their, and their job they do. Um, we, we, there's a whole bunch we can break down for it, but uh, – that's basically the difference and the importance of, of stacking, you know, the lineup and stuff like that. But uh, the players and definitely linebackers, DBs, uh, everybody on, on the defensive side need to look at what their school does to know where they're going to fit in and know how they're going to get on the field. Because that, that could be a year for you have to wait for somebody else to graduate versus going to another school where they play a different defense that will help you get on the field early. I think people don't understand the concept of what them defenses are. I mean, if you look at – a three, four front, you usually have a nose tackle and the nose tackle is a big guy. And then, so if you're looking, if you're a defensive tackle and your defensive tackle kid that's six, two and 280 or 290, you're probably not the nose tackle that they're looking for. They're probably looking for a six, three, 300 pound guy. So if you end up going to a school, that's a three, four front, you have to remember this too, though. Coaches feel like they can change anybody. Coaches yeah. feel like they can they can utilize any type of player and fix it around because maybe I want to stand my defensive line up. Maybe I want a tweener type because I'm looking for speed off of the edge. So I'm going to just have – I'm going to have all speed guys. I might have an Aaron Donald type guy that doesn't fit a 3-4 defense, but he's so fast he can burn by the center off of the cut. So it's not – I'm not really using him as that 3-4 nose to stuff the middle, but I'm using him more as a 3-4, you know, um, speed rusher because I'm going to put all speed out there and speed's going to make holes because when you have a guy burning somebody to the hole, that's what's going to happen. So I think at the end of the day, when it comes to linebackers and when it comes to the front seven, when you're looking at the, the, 
the actual defensive layout, coaches feel like they can put people in positions to succeed. They always have. They'll look at a kid and they see potential because that's what their job is, to find potential. And necessarily, it doesn't necessarily mean that your kid's going to get the most playing time at that, at that school, but the coach believes in them. And maybe that belief of them saying that we believe in you is what pushes them to that school ultimately. But that belief doesn't guarantee you a spot to play. And some, like what Randy said, there's other schools that will give you an opportunity to come in and play right away, but they'll turn it down. And there's a lot of kids that will take a, a um, D2 offer and look at it and go, ah, D2, nothing. They're, they're not good. But it doesn't matter where you play football at. You can get viewed by NFL teams if you dominate. And if you go into that position, if Deion's son goes into the position at Jackson State, it's not going to matter. He's going to have NFL teams look at him. It doesn't matter. If you're a four-star recruit out of high school, you're already marked as a four-star recruit. They're already looking at you. They already know who you are. They have you marked. They know everything about your high school. Um, and, I, and I think at the end of the day, they do their homework. They're not dumb. They know exactly what they're looking for. But it, they leave it onto the kid to make that decision. And some of the kids make the decision based off of whatever. Maybe it's the school. Maybe it is the SEC that they get the opportunity to play for. But I will say this, guys. I'm sorry. I have to leave. I have a soccer game at 11. I've been pushing it. But I got to drive. So wish me luck, man. I think y'all hold it down, man. A couple more questions left. Thank you all so much. God bless. You're good. You're good. You, well, you know what I wanted to say about that. I, now, I ain't going to really do too much breakdown. You know, I understand it, but the, I ain't got, the terminology gets a little weird for me. But what I will say is, like, so what I learned, is, especially with the school that my son played defense for, like, they use a rover. And so that's kind of like that hybrid linebacker person that can kind of play some, some, some corner or maybe nickel or whatever. Um, you know, they kind of just are out there in space or whatever. And so I do think it's important. What I want to say to parents is it is important. If you don't understand it, talk to your high school coach, talk to somebody that can help you break it down because it really does matter. Now, the other monkey wrench I want to throw in there is that defense has changed. I've said this before. My son had three DCs at Notre Dame. And so he's a corner, so it didn't really change him. But when you're talking about that DN, that linebacker, um, when you're talking about those positions, they are really critical because just like um, Damon just said, they'll try to, oh, well, we got you, th we think you got, I've seen a dude go from corner to receiver to linebacker. And I'm thinking to myself, now what kind of film is he going to have? You know what I'm saying? Like, who like who gets to pick? And and they went, you know, again, corners typically kind of slim, kind of thin, kind of long, speedy. Uh, but they put all this weight on this boy, and now he's a linebacker. And so, but I think that that, as a parent, I don't know if I would have went for that. I might have transferred or something like that. But you, you have to know because, like Damon just said, coaches feel like they can turn you into anything, and that's not always the truth. You got to know your strengths. You got to know what type of defense you fit better into. And, you know, in high school, they'll put you anywhere. So when you're being recruited for college, a lot of times all these kids, like my kid played special teams, he played defense, he was a receiver, he was all these things, but he's playing DB in the league now. So it kind of matters that you kind of start honing in and that you kind of start working on certain skill sets, but also knowing and being informed that this school offer him, but they really don't, they use their linebacker as the rover, or they use their linebacker kind of on the, um, you know, as a down lineman sometimes to rush – you need to know those things because they are very important. And I mean, that's, that's what I got. I'll throw this in and then we'll move along. But one of the things that stood out to me is parents need to not just be aware of position, but that your, your child's mental processing speed. Because some defenses are allowed, like they're, it's more on instinct. It's not necessarily that they have to read the full play. They have a little bit more flexibility, but some people they have to read. And so you need to know like, okay, what is this defense going to demand from my kid from a mental perspective as well? And you need to understand if your kid processes, how they process things. Um, that's one of the things that I picked up. And I just want to throw that out there. Y'all know I do I'm really big on, on, on thought in the mind and understanding that piece. So parents do need to be aware, be really, 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 um, <laughs> be really, really mindful of whether you have an instinctive ball hawk or you have somebody who, who can sit back and actually read a play and wait for it to develop. Because as you go from level to level, that is going, that too is super important. And it is a skill that you can change, but you need to know what you're working with first.